Hello everyone, how are you getting on? It's such a sunny and warm day today that I thought it'd be nice to instead of staying in one place or going on a bit of an adventure, going for a walk. So what I've done is I've made the tea already, so that's all been done, and I've put it into a flask and now I've got it with me, I've got it portable. So it's gonna be a little bit different today, but I'm going to walk through a nice route that I've recently discovered and there's some lovely points along the way. So I'm currently just walking uh, close to my house away on the road. I'm actually walking on the middle of the road because there are less cars around. I feel I can get away with um, walking on them <laughs> and it's and not oh, there's a car behind me. I'm getting a few weird looks walking down the road with a microphone uh, on me. Um, it does look a bit, bit suspicious. I'm also wearing my girlfriend's uh, sunglasses and they're quite round. So I do look uh, not, I don't look too ordinary, but I do find women's sunglasses a bit more fun. There's a bit more to them. So I quite like them. So I'm just passing the Noah's Ark Children's Hospice and it's set in a beautiful location here just where all the, just as, as London breaks off into more of a rural green area, they have this hospice here. And what it used to be was a kind of dilapidated community centre and as a kid, I used to go there and I had such a blast there. But I feel like there's a thing in kids wanting to find derelict places. And I don't know what we really did. We just kind of walked about and had a laugh, really. But, I mean, it's now being put to a lot better use. But it's, it's funny that this area re I really associate is somewhere that's very unkept and very uh, dilapidated now I see something that is the antithesis. It is a, a very nice new build. Um, so, anyway, I'm glad it's been put to good use. There's also, next to the hospice, the Nature Reserve Environment Centre. So this must be a good spot for finding some nature. And that gets me very excited because hopefully I'll see some of nature myself. And I'll try and best describe it to you. Now we're going to do some tea rivia. Which underground tube line has the most stations? Question two. What is Samuel L. Jackson's middle name? And since we're about to approach my old rugby club, I've got a themed question here. What year was Rugby Union made professional? I can see that there's a, a tree or a flower pollinating because I can see all these white specks just floating down, kind of like very light snow. So I'm standing right by my old rugby club and just looking at the clubhouse, very different to the hospice, where the hospice is very nicely built and has all these nice facilities. I mean, th this clubhouse is rather basic, but has a really special place in my heart. It's it filled with lovely people, has some great memories here. What makes it really unique is that it has a communal bath. It's one of the only rugby clubs that still has one, because now these days, you know, you just have a load of showers. And so straight after the game, we'd be so muddy and the whole team would get into the bath and the water would just turn instantly brown. 
and it's quite nice just looking around the pitches I guess as it's off season but of course with these times there aren't no sports happening but people using the pitches for other means we've got you know two people catching up sat next to each other you've got two people uh, playing football against each other um, you've got a, a small family over there who are chucking a, a, fr- a frisbee type thing so it's good that this, these pictures are being put to, to good use. Uh, also, these pictures are useful for someone with a microphone to stand in the middle of it and chat about things. So I feel like as I've got to my first official stop that I should have some of my tea. So now I have my flask of tea. Is the air coming out of it? That's very nice. Even though it's a really hot day, it seems a little counterintuitive to be taking a hot tea drink. I did learn in biology once that apparently you drink a hot drink and it cools you down. I don't quite believe that. I think that's a load of rubbish. Actually, actually quite nice to sit down. I've only just started my journey and I'm already... I'm already tired. So to the left of me, is an allotment. Allotments are so pretty. I love them. I love the kind of communal uh, nature of it. So I think, yeah, the allotment's great. And people got little huts. You might have a little, can't have a cup of tea there. If I could have a cup of tea in the allotment, now that would be really good. Anyone has an allotment and wants them, and is okay for me to make tea in there, that would be absolutely fabulous. Maybe I could pick out some carrots. That'd be brilliant. Right, got to keep going. So as I come to the corner of the rugby pitches, there's a big hill where we used to always uh, mudslide down it at the end of practice. So that's probably why the baths got quite dirty. Now I'm coming to the edge of the rugby pitches. Usually I exit a path just to the left, but I'm going to take the other one on the right because I haven't done it before. So... Oh, it's quite small. That's probably why I haven't gone through it. And it's quite spiky. Okay, I'm ducking down. I'm ducking down. I'm ducking down. Ow! I just hit my head slightly. <laughs> That's probably why I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it knocked. Oh, it knocked my hat. I think it didn't help that I am wearing headphones. Oh my god, I've been knocked again. Okay. The headphones are going to prove a problem. Um... Okay. So now I'm in this little woodland area and it's right by a golf course. Now, oh, I could come out a little bit to it, but there are people playing golf, so I don't want to disturb them. This golf course, uh, designed by a famous golfer called Seve- Severiano, sorry for my pronunciation, Severiano Berastoros. Berastoros. I think that's how you pronounce it. And what was really clever about this golf course is that what it started as was just some flat fields. Nothing impressive about it. What they did is they used landfill to create an interesting, diverse landscape that can make an interesting golf course. I think that's a fantastic way of repurposing uh, waste. The golf course is in fact called the Shire and actually while I'm walking through this forest I do feel a little bit like a hobbit which for me I'm a big fan of Lord of the Rings uh, which is a book and film and so the Shire is where the the lovely hobbits live in a kind of perfect rural setting where they're kind of running around fields and there's lovely ale drunk in the pubs and uh, farming you know very much like the allotment but it has that shire feel definitely to it and now i'm in this forest it does feel quite magical because you've got the light kind of trickling down through the leaves imprinting on the next door tree and these the trees are quite thin but rather tall so there's something about it that makes you kind of look up as a kind of almost like a a po- 
pointed arrow up to the sky. I've got a great idea. I'm going to dust off my old clarinet. I last played probably about 15 years ago. And I'm going to play Concerning Hobbits, which is the song that's played while the hobbits are in the Shire. I have tended to do this when I'm on a nice walk to play that song. Because if you ever listen to it, it does feel like you're going on some very fun, uh, whimsical adventure. So there are lots of little winding paths around here, so there's no one set direction. And what it seems to be is some seem to come back round, but other paths seem to maybe just seem to just go off. And I quite like going on a walk and not deciding hugely where you need to go, but kind of just going on instinct and and just walking. Now I'm going to read a poem called The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveller, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair, and perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as that for the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I... I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. So as I'm walking here, it started to make me think, who made these paths? Who was the first person to start treading in this area, and then followed by another and another, so much so that a path was made, and then people now just walk in it and don't even think. Now, I did a bit of research and I learned about desire paths, which are paths that are made by us treading across a route because we want to and over time creating a path. Now, all over the world, there are lots of names that refer to it, but a lot of references to cow paths, donkey paths, elephant paths. So a lot of these are kind of practical animals that we probably over many, many years use to carry things, uh, to transport things or to... Um, move livestock. I guess maybe that's why a a desire path is normally a more efficient way of getting somewhere. So if you had your cattle or you had your donkey carrying something, you'd want it to go a quicker route. So that's probably where the name comes from. It's the wishes of the walker's feet that create these paths. I think that's rather romantic. hearing an airplane. Can you hear that? Very rare now these days. So I found online a page dedicated to these desire paths. I, I saw a photo of a desire path outside someone's house and it was this person who had a long distance relationship and would call their partner each night and would walk between these two spots and over time created this path. I just think that's really beautiful and really romantic. Here's an interesting fact about desired paths. They say that the first desired path in New York was Broadway. Where, you know, we got all the musicals. That is a desired path, apparently. So when it was a Dutch city and known as New Amsterdam, not New York. Oh, oh I've got a bug just hitting me on the shin. It's got very big legs. <laughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> um, where was I? Yes, uh, New Amsterdam and not New York. And it was in fact formed by the feet of Native Americans. And I think it was to avoid some uh, impractical natural 
obstacles such as swamps and rivers and hills and cliffs, it is weird to imagine a major city with these environmental and practicalities because we've done so well of building it up and making it as human made as possible. But I'd love to just walk through London just as it was before any humans got there. It'd probably be really difficult to get around and it'd probably be similar to what I'm seeing around right now. And most of the UK a few thousand years ago was just mostly woodland. And I quite like imagining it, looking around and thinking this could have been all around the land before us. All of this around me predates me. It's amazing. So now we're just going to quickly do some answers for the tea rivia. First question, which underground line has the most stations? The answer is the district line. Very confusing line, don't recommend. Question two, Samuel L. Jackson's middle name is Leroy. And question three, rugby union was made professional in 1995. I think it's about time to have another sip of tea. Oh, that tea is really hitting the spot. Gives me that bit of energy. The birds are really loud. Can you hear them? I'm going to have to do this in a few parts. This has taken a lot longer than I expected. So, yeah, I can't do the whole walk in one go, I'm afraid. So you're going to have to come next week to continue on the journey. I didn't realise there's going to be so many things that will distract me along the way. So after this, I know that I have to cross a stream, which will be fun. I'll exit the forest and enter some nice fields. I hope I can find some nice stuff there. And a Roman road as well that I get to walk on. So lots of fun, exciting things up ahead. But I I'm comfy here with my cup of tea. Join me next week. So I want to thank Chad Crouch and Moon Placer for their uh, music that I got online. Thank you so much. It's great. And I'd also like to thank my friend Johnny, who sent me some of his work. He's a great producer. And so thank you, Johnny, for sending me your work. And I love the song uh, playing in the background now. So thank you. And also thank you to the illustrator, Anna Hardstuff, that you'll see in the video. See all the links to the artists below. So that's all from me today, everyone. Have a lovely week. Take your time because, you know, I've had a lovely walk and I took far too much time than I should have done. I've had a really, really nice time and I hope you have too. So have a lovely week and you'll hear from me soon.